Uh, I have the distinct pleasure today to, first of all, release the kids to Big City. Um, so kids, you can go on over. Um, the rest of us are going to stay here, and we get to um, listen to our guest preacher today. Um, I love the Nazarene Church because we um, are connected all around the world. I grew up in uh, Nampa, and I went to Nampa First Church, and Jen's husband was actually the intern, um, the youth pastor intern while I was a teen in the youth group, and he has gone on to be a youth pastor, and he is the district NYI president and has been for years and years um, leading all of our uh, teen pastors. Um, and, uh, and so I knew Jen back when I was a teen as well. And so she has been in Pastor Gary's classes at NNU, and so he knows her well. Um, but we all get to enjoy hearing from her today. So let's give her a warm welcome. <laughs> well, thank you, Jacqueline. Good to see you again. And Rich says hi. <laughs> And I guess I thought I better introduce myself a little bit more. Um, there should be a picture of my family coming up on the screen, but um, I'm Jen Vasquez, and I've been in ministry at the Canyon Hill Church in Caldwell since '02. My husband and I started there together, and so he's standing next to me with the sunglasses. And then our daughter, Chevelle, is in the center um, as a sixth grader. And then Orion is next to her. He's just finished his freshman year at NNU. And then Diego is next to him. And he is a junior right now at Middleton. And so we are all happy to be here. My parents are here. They're coming through on their way to a vacation. And then Rich's mom and sister are also here. And she actually lives in Colorado. But they're all here because Rich and I are actually headed out on a cruise this week to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary and so we've got family in town and just good things ahead and so i'm just really excited for this week and it was total coincidence that i was going to speak here today but but you've got the whole crew and i just wanted to say thanks for being so hospitable and so welcoming um, your reputation has always been really good around the district and i've I've always said, I love that Emmett Church. I love coming over the hill, and I love visiting. Um, we visited here probably 10 years ago or so, and we just we, ha we still remember it and talk about it. So you guys are highly esteemed around the district. You should know that. Well, I actually just resigned from my position at Canyon Hill, and I wanted to talk to you today about some things I'm learning during my interim time because maybe there's some similarities between what I'm going through and what your church is going through as we're in this in-between phase of our lives. And I remember I have a lot of experience in, in interims as I stayed at Canyon Hill during two different interims and I was that pastoral staff person like Pastor Nathan, that hung through it and through the, time, the change and through the different time. And I remember how relaxed the congregation was during those times because people just showed up because they wanted to, um, not out of a sense of obligation. But I remember one thing that the district office told us during the last interim. They said, you know what? you may need to pause some of your ministries during this time. And what do you think the congregation said? I mean, I've checked your bulletin. I just listened to your announcements. You guys are pretty active. You guys look like you're fulfilling your mission really well. And I think that's what the Canyon Hill Church community felt too, is you don't want to pause a ministry during an interim time. You know, doesn't that feel counterintuitive to keeping things going for the next person, keeping things strong for the future? And I think there's a fear that maybe you might lose somebody. And the idea or pausing, of pausing 
or stopping to take a winter rest or a season of dormancy causes that fear. I remember Canyon Hill didn't even want to stop their Sunday night service during the interim because one time, maybe 10, 15 years ago, one person walked in off the street that was a guest and they said, we are diehards. We want to keep doing this every week because that one person might come in off the street. Well, I had fear too before I resigned my position at Canyon Hill because I didn't have anything lined up. I didn't know what was next. And you guys don't either, do you? You don't know what's ahead. You also may be dealing with grief, the loss of a beloved and great pastoral family. And some of you might be missing them a little bit And that is totally normal to feel that way. And from their perspective, they're probably feeling that way too. So I just want to say, I think I might be experiencing something similar to what you're experiencing. And I wanted to bring you good news today that God is teaching me something. And I wanted to share it with you. And it can be summarized into two words. And I kind of felt like Doug and Nathan wanted to say those two words like their stories were heading that direction and it's like they saved the big sermon the two word sermon that i have for you today for me to share and that's god provides god provides what do we need him to provide here are some ideas to kind of get your brain in gear you need salvation Do you need freedom? Do you need to be forgiven? Do you need restoration? Do you need strength? Do you need abundant life? Do you need purpose? Do you need joy or hope or peace? Do you need courage to try something new? Do you need rest and rejuvenation? Do you need to let go of something like fear or sadness or anger or the past or rejection? Do you need to let go of something good, even a Sunday night service kind of good? Maybe resting after a long season of ministry. You know, all of us need these things, probably all of these things, but there may be one area today where the Holy Spirit may be whispering to you, and you sense that your cup is empty. Whatever you truly, truly need, God knows what it is, and God has what you need. And he is not sitting up in heaven hoarding all of his glorious riches. He is ready to give to those that ask, those that recognize that they need him and his gifts. God provides. And I'm going to read um, some scripture out of Isaiah 45. And I was kind of getting nervous there that Doug was going to read right through my verses because mine kind of continues right past where his left off, which is pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> and it, I think they may come up on the screen, but I'll go ahead and read them now. It says, For Jehovah created the heavens and the earth, And put everything in place. And he made the world to be lived in, not to be an empty chaos. I am Jehovah, he says, and there is no other. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner so that no one can know what I mean. And I didn't tell Israel to ask me for what I didn't plan to give. No, for I, Jehovah, speak only truth and righteousness. Well, this section of Isaiah was written to the Jews that were exiled in Babylon. And they had been on the receiving end of God's judgment. Jerusalem was destroyed, and they were scattered. And so many had to live away from their homes. And so you've got this section of Isaiah Isaiah chapters 40 through 55 is written to a group of people that are living in an in-between time in their life. 
But God says in this passage, he says, I am Jehovah and there is no other. There is no other God, no other thing on earth who will meet your needs. It is he and he alone. Now, think back to special holidays or Christmas, um, birthdays that your kids or grandkids would have. <clears throat> As a parent or grandparent, would you ever ask a child, what do you want for Christmas? All the while, never planning to give them a gift? No, you would never do that. You know, we know that familiar passage of scripture that says, if then, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? He is not hoarding his glorious riches, is he? And that kind of echoes that passage I read from Isaiah. I didn't tell Israel to ask me for what I didn't plan to give. God is our number one provider. It is not yourself or myself, is it? It's him. And he is listening, and he knows what you need before you ask. And he wants you to ask for a miracle. Think about how much of a miracle it is to receive something like courage or hope. You cannot give that to yourself, can you? And those kind of gifts last for an eternity, don't they? Compared to if you prayed for your monthly, you know, I understand praying for a monthly power bill to be prayed, to be, you know, needed. But something like courage or hope or joy or love or strength, that lasts forever. So I've got a few points here to make, maybe six or seven, of things that God provides and things that he's teaching me that he provides. So the number one is God provides care for his people. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11 says, He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. And he gently leads those who have young. And so still, this is part of that whole vision of Isaiah 40 through 55, where Isaiah is trying to cast a vision to the people of how their homeland would be restored and cities would be reestablished and would overflow with people. And this gave people hope. This gave hope to the Jews that God would lead them back to Judah, back to their homeland. And so as God leads your church on this new journey, you can rest in the fact that you are lambs in his arms. And you can have peace as you rest there and let him tend you and guide you. He has promised to provide, and he does. He himself will go before us, make our paths straight, fight our battles. He will take care of us as we go from activity, activity to dormancy to rest during a season. So that way, when we come out on the other side into next season, it will be spring, and we will bloom, and we will flourish again. And God's got this season in your life, in the life of your church, and God's got you. And he's working to provide the best for you. He is the parent, and you don't have to do anything. He is in charge, and he is king over you and over this church. And so if your cup is empty and without hope today, turn and put your hope in him, because he will not grow tired or weary. And he loves to give good gifts to his children. And he provides in all seasons even in seasons of rest, the care doesn't stop, no matter the situation. And so the Israelites found peace as they learned how God tended them. And this peace and this hope actually propelled them back. It propelled them out, and it propelled them home to their homeland. 
So I want you guys to start thinking about what spiritual resource you may need during this time in your life. Because God provides care for his people. The second point is that God's resources are infinite. I'm going to read that verse again, part of it that I read from Isaiah 45. For Jehovah created the heavens and the earth and put everything in place. And he made the world to be lived in, not to be in empty chaos. God's given us boundaries and fences to help us flourish. We only have 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. We're grouped into families. We're grouped into church communities. This church is located here on this property in this neighborhood. You have a job with restrictions as to what you can or can't do as part of your employment. Your income has limits. Physically, your body can only do so much each day, and then you have to rest or you have to eat. You can't just buy Christmas presents for every child that you'd like to buy Christmas presents for. Unfortunately, there's limitations there. And so our world feels really finite because our material resources are finite. Our time, our energy is finite. All of these things hem, hem us in, and they're good things because they bring control and order to what would be a chaotic world. And we're actually blessed in those limitations. But because we have those boundaries and those fences, we end up making decisions that only see to that boundary and only see just a little bit ahead. We cannot see the big picture like we need to. And we end up making human decisions based on fear or worry. Or we put our hope in the latest technology or in the next medical breakthrough. But I want to give you good news today is that God has brought infinite resources to this world that feels really finite. We have needs that we tend to look to the world to fill. But the world cannot meet those needs. God is ready to do that on a much deeper level. And we tend to live in pursuit of this shallow, temporary stuff that lasts only a moment. And it actually exhausts us. And they've started to do studies about how exhausted we are from our technology. And so waiting for that stuff to satisfy your needs is just time wasted. It doesn't fill us with what we truly need. And I realize there's people here today and a people around the world that have genuine material needs. And I don't want to minimize that. And I know people have genuine physical needs where health is really a struggle. But in the end... All of creation, including you and your body, will be made new. And so we don't need to worry about that today. God will take care of today and tomorrow. And my prayer for you guys is that the scales would fall off our eyes and we would see that all of heaven and earth is just bursting at the seams with everything we truly need. And it will rain down like manna from heaven and be just enough for today because God's resources are infinite and they never end. <clears throat> well, as we move into the New Testament, we discover that all of God's provision and all of that abundant life is found in the person of Jesus. And our proof that God provides is found within the gift of his son, God provides life. John 1, 4 says, in him was life. We know that Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus is God embodied. Before Jesus came in the flesh, God really wasn't seen or heard or touched, except in the very rare circumstance. 
God hadn't revealed himself to the masses yet. But it says in Colossians 1.19, this is what God wanted to do. God wanted all of himself to be in his son. All of that infinite God, that creative power, that might, on the one hand, that being with infinite resources, and that caring God on the other hand, that shepherd who tends the flock, that gentle person that's full of goodness and meekness, all of that multiple sides of God, all of that was revealed in Jesus. And once God revealed himself in his son, God was on display for the whole world to see. And life was on display. Not just life that's eternal, but life that's abundant and full. A purposeful life. Jesus had purpose for what he did. Jesus had a strong life, a courageous life, a life that bursted at the seams with God's grace and goodness. And so this kind of life was revealed to all of us through Jesus. Everything Jesus did through his whole life, his suffering and his death, revealed God's character because God cares about what he's created. Jesus' acts, his words, his presence radiated God. People could now see God. They could hear God. They could touch God. They could be forgiven by God, healed by God. They could be taught better ways to live. They could know God's heart and know God's love. Because in Jesus, God provides life. And then in in Jesus, God provides joy. And we see this in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And at the end of of Jesus' earthly ministry, he told the disciples that he would be going away for a little while. He would be killed and they would experience grief. But Jesus said in John 16 that their grief would turn to joy, and no one would be able to take away this joy. And so we're going to see that on the screen. John 16, 22 says, I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. The disciples thought they would be happy to see Jesus again. But that wasn't really the big picture of what was going on. The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus would permanently change things. And the joy from this would be something that the momentary troubles of the world just wouldn't even be able to touch. The crucifixion and resurrection brought freedom from sin that would last forever. And that brought joy to everyone. So when our attention is on our temporary troubles... And we forget the gift given to us on the cross. We can lose our joy, can't we? So we remember what Jesus has done for us. Because in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God provides joy. Um, My second to last point is that God provides unlimited access to himself. In John 16, 23, we'll finish the rest of that passage. It says, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And Jesus is teaching the disciples that even though he's about to leave them, God will answer their prayers. Jesus experienced agony of death on the cross. But at the moment of his crucifixion, what happened to that curtain that was hanging in the temple? You know, it was torn in two, wasn't it? And that was a symbol of what separated us from God. And at that moment, it was removed. And when Jesus was crucified, we who follow him receive unlimited access to God. 
that loving act of Jesus gave people a way to approach their heavenly father like they had never experienced before. And common people like you and I can boldly approach the throne of grace and ask for help in our time of need. And God will hear and answer. And it's proven within the death, incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, a personal story. Um, I took a pay cut in some job restructuring last fall, and I was kind of nervous about it. You know, I prayed. I said, God, I'm going to lose out on income, and um, not sure about that. That makes me nervous, but you know, on the first day of my new lower salary, a check came in the mail, and over the course of these next months since, five more checks came in the mail that we weren't expecting, and it was a miracle, and God provided in that moment, and God looked out for us. Um, I also have been speaking with a pastor about possibly working at his church, and those conversations alone just filled me with hope and filled me with the idea that God is looking out for little old me, <laughs> right? Gave me hope for the future. So I just want to still reiterate the good news that as you have welcomed the life of the risen Lord within you, he gives you access to God's resources like never before. They are always available. They never end. And they're like a stream of living water that doesn't dry up. Because Jesus is all you need. Colossians 2, 7 says, Let your roots grow down into him and draw nourishment from him. God provides unlimited access to himself. And even with that answer to prayer. Well, the last thing that God has shown me that he provides is God provides others. God provides people you would never expect and fellowship with people that you would never expect. Now, if you look around the room, you guys are seated here with people that you are weekly experiencing Jesus' life, death, and resurrection with. You are retelling this story every week. You have Jesus in common. That's the most basic thing you have in common. And so you are here every week celebrating all he has done in your life. You're hearing his words through others, seeing him renew and restore lives, and experiencing miracles. Because you know what? God is seen, heard, and felt and experienced in our relationship with other Christians, isn't he? And I know you guys know this. You are a person that carries around with them all of God's grace and goodness. And you have the freedom and responsibility to share that with everyone you come in contact with. And so when I went through a job change back last fall, um, I started getting all kinds of people coming up to me and, you know, I'd get a chance to kind of tell them what was happening in my life. And, you know, they'd always say something like, you know, God is going to take care of you, Jen. No problem. You, you got this and um, he'll figure something out for you. Well, it got to be so many people saying that same thing that I started making a list and writing it down. And just because I was, you know, pleasantly surprised but um, I didn't really get it, you know. It didn't sink into my heart to where I believed it until the day that I found myself saying it back to someone, saying, you know what, God provides, and this is going to be fine, and I'm going to do okay, and he's going to take care of me. When I heard myself say it out loud, I was like, oh, yeah, that's true. God is going to provide so, my challenge, I guess, my encouragement is God may send someone in your life that you don't expect as a gift to you. Pay attention to the people that 
that are coming into your life and what they're saying. Because our relationship as Christians at its most deepest level is Jesus, and he's the one speaking through others. And so in that vein, I was hoping that this morning, um, in closing, that I, we could all hear from each other and take just five minutes or so And if there's a way that God has provided for you in the last few weeks, if you would stand and just share that with us. And um, they're prepared in the back with mics so that um, we could all hear each other. But I'd just like to hear, and, you know, it will help you to vocalize it, and it will also help all of us to be encouraged today with what God is doing. So... all started here Um, a couple weeks ago I was down at altar crawl and not many of you know this but uh, I sustained a back injury many many years ago and I've been in constant pain for a long time and I was on my knees praying to God uh, to help me uh, get rid of this pain and allow me to do some of these things that I need to do and um, as I was on my knees and Pastor Tim came and put his hands upon me and started praying, I just felt this overwhelming tingling throughout my body. I felt like the Holy Spirit was reaching in there. And uh, when I got up from the altar call and went back to my seat, I walked back to my seat with no pain. And I haven't had any since that since that altar call. So today, I went back to altar call because, dummy me, I've been forgetting to uh, give God all the praise and all the glory. So I went back today to give thanks to God for what he'd done for me and how he sent that Holy Spirit into me and helped me out. So I am thankful, and I love all you folks. So if anybody else has anything to say, please. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Vicki, and I think I've been here about two months now. And as an educator, especially in these times, it is a rough, rough job. And I came from a place where I was just struggling to feel connected, to feel welcomed, to feel loved. I was really, really lonely. And I don't feel that anymore. I look forward to coming every week and being a part and finding a new place to belong and making new friends. I look for Juanita every week to give me a smile and uh, to welcome me. And I just have felt such an overwhelming love and acceptance. And it recharges me for the work that I do the rest of the week. So thank you. The Lord has provided for me. Thank you. said to bring all your burdens come as you are and thank you for coming and sharing that with us so uh, over the last couple months my son Adam has been dealing with a hernia and last Thursday we went in um, to get it repaired, and just 
the thanks that I can give to God is immeasurable because like literally the next day he's doing parkour off my couch. <laughs> this kid is so strong and has been through so much and just seeing him even be here today after being in surgery last Thursday doing an open hernia repair. It's just amazing and like there's nothing else you can say but like praise the Lord for that. Well, thank you to those of you that shared. Those were great testimonies. And I would just invite you to stand and receive the benediction. And I just invite you to actually put your hands down, upside down, because we want to let our burdens and our worries and the things that God has told us to let go of, we want to let go of that first. So now we turn our hands up and we receive. We receive, God, your provision and we receive your grace. And that can be anything today. And so we thank you for what you have given and what you are about to give. And we welcome all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.